and they can also make the money without all of the time, right? Now, is it still going to take time to be successful? Absolutely. But do you have to work eight hours a day to make full-time income? Not even close. I have a three, three day a week work week where I work at most three hours a day. So that is something that is totally attainable for people. And so my, my whole thing now is to help people build a business where they're no longer living in the leftovers, you know, what's left over right. from their business. They actually get to design their own life and design a business that supports that. Do you want God's plan for your life? Do you want to discover your calling? Do you want to build a business that's aligned with God's will? Hey girl, hey, I'm Jeanette, business and faith coach. After a decade in the military, the Air Force said, see you later, and I had to find my true calling. Want to know how God directed my life from a cybersecurity engineer to a faith and business mentor? In this podcast, I'll teach you how to start a business, how to know your business is God's calling, monetization techniques, how to trust the Holy Spirit, and how to set boundaries to listen to His Word alone. Ready to become unapologetically unstoppable? Hey girl, hey, welcome to the Unapologetically Unstoppable podcast. And today I've got a special guest. Here we've got Sam Harris, who is my new friend, and I'm so obsessed with her. She's great at all things marketing. Please say hi to my friend, Sam. Hello. So good to be here. I'm super excited, Jeanette. Thanks so much for having me on. Yes. So I like to do these like little mini interviews about Christian women who have businesses and just tell us a little bit about you and your business. And I'll ask you some questions along the way. Sounds good. So if we haven't met, I'm Samantha. Um, I have been hanging out on the internet doing online business for the last seven years. And before that, I had worked in startups and um I had my own little clothing company. It was a Christian clothing company called Hot and Humble. And I really thought that that was going to be the catalyst to step away from my job. And I want to just kind of tell you quickly that I'll give you the Cliff Notes version of how the Lord provided in a way that I had never, ever expected. So in um, the beginning of 2017, I guess late 2016, my mom uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer. And at the time I was working at my last job and, um, it, it was a sales job for a company who was a give back company. We weren't a nonprofit, like a, a scheduled 501 C3, but, um, we gave back 90% of our profits and kept 10%. So it was like a reverse love tie. I, I love that. Concept. It was, it was such a fun thing to do. And what we were doing for work and for money was, uh, creating apparel and some like tchotchkes and stuff, but not much, mostly apparel, t-shirts, sweatshirts, you know, things like that, um, that were printed or embroidered for either companies that were doing large scale print needs, like, um, runs and races and concerts and things like that, or for people who were wanting to start their own clothing brand. And that was the part that I really loved that really interested me. I loved like the helping them pick it out, but I really loved helping them with the marketing side of things and helping them sell their stuff. So they'd come back to me and buy more. Right. And yes. one day I'm sitting with one of my clients, one of my very favorite clients, and I'm teaching her how to use Instagram stories. Cause this is right when Instagram stories were fresh on the, on the streets. Right. And I was like, Hey, this is how you can use this for your business. And she looks at me sideways and she's like, Sam, why are you doing this? And I was like, doing what? And she's like, why are you selling t-shirts for a living? Why aren't you teaching people how to use Instagram? And I was like, I am teaching you that. And she's like, no, 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 no. Why aren't you teaching this as your job? And I was like, well, that's not a job. I kid you not. <laughs> Within the next two weeks, I heard from the Lord finally, because I had been praying for a couple of years and I had said, Lord, if you're going to have me leave this job, I would absolutely love for it to be to work for myself. And when you say jump, I'm jumping twice as high. I am going to do the dang thing, right? And so I never, ever once in my life thought that I would leave my job to start a marketing agency, but I did. And within two weeks, all of this happened. You know, my mom got sick. I, I had to reprioritize things and I really had to take a hard look at what I was doing with my time. And I, I really wanted more time freedom and really my yeah. whole journey 
has been about creating more time freedom um, because I I'm an Enneagram too. And if you're into human design, I'm a projector and I really would work for compliments. Like I would. And girl, like I was making 11 bucks an hour working for these startups. I was at a, at an executive level in these companies, building them with my own dollars an hour for $11 an hour, as supposed to be commissioned, but you know, they could never afford to pay it. It was a startup. I was building this with my own sweat. I thought I had, I had thought I had sweat equity in this business. Oh. Turns out I didn't. Turns out that was a great thing because they went bankrupt, but <laughs> <laughs> it brought me to where I'm at now, which was, you know, at, in 2017, I wanted to be with my mom more. I wanted to help her through her cancer diagnosis, you know, go into her house and clean up all the dirty chemicals and stuff she had in there. <laughs> right. And and I did. And um, when I while I was gone, they were really pressed about me not being at my desk. Here's the thing. I was selling just as much, if not more. I was doing just as much, if not more. But I wasn't working my full eight hours. And they didn't like that. And I was like, well, I could do this for myself. I really right. could. Right. And I could do more and I could keep it all. So why am I doing this for $11 an hour? And um, so, you know, I did an, I did a vendor event during this time. And after that vendor event, I did so well at the event that the Lord started speaking to me and he said, hey, so tomorrow you're going to quit your job. And this makes no sense on paper. None. Zero. And I was like, OK, yeah, That's like the vendor, the vendor event went well. Like I could keep doing those and I could I could make eleven dollars an hour. <laughs> and he was like, no. Remember that conversation you had with Nikki? You're going to do marketing for people. That's what you're going to do. And I was like, all right. I told you I'd jump twice as high. So here we go. Yeah. So I literally walk into my office the next day. I give them my notice. They freak out. And they're like, what? You're leaving? Um, at the at the job, I was the only female in the building. There was about five of wow. us. All men plus me. And the uh, the saying goes, where there's a Sam, there's a way. Because I am a two. I mother people. I make things happen, right? And these boys like to rely on that. And so oh, yeah. um, it, it was kind of a shocker for them. But it was good for them, too. Like, they couldn't afford to pay me anymore. And unfortunately, the business um, went down a couple months after I left. Because where there was no Sam, there was no way. No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't me. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. But um, anywho... Um, I had a coffee date set up with a girlfriend of mine from Alaska who was visiting into town because she was going to a marketing conference. We had had this coffee date set up for months. And literally the day after I have my last day at my job, she, we sit down for a coffee and she says, so what are you up to? What's what's new? What's going on? And I said, I just quit my job yesterday. And she goes, no way. What are you doing now? What? Why did you quit your job? What's going on? And I said, I'm starting a marketing agency. And she grabs me by the shoulders and she's shaking me as she's telling me this. And she says, no way. She goes, Sam, you're my new marketing agent. Like you are my new marketing department. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You, we haven't even said, like, we haven't even talked about this. What are you talking about? She goes, I came to San Diego to learn how to do marketing from this lady. And I don't want to use her, but I knew I came to San Diego for my marketing and you're it you're the one and I was like what 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 like I hadn't presented her with anything lo and behold that one contract replaced my income yes girl first contract and I go okay lord I see you I hear you I'm in it let's go I'm, I'm here right Let, let's go so um from there it really was just like pedal to the metal um it was such a needed concept and point of education for so many women I knew. Thank God I had been networking for years at this point. And so I had all of these contacts and the Lord just like really provided in the biggest way. Um, cool thing is I started making six figures in my first year. And like I yes. said, well, I was making $11 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, it was, it was big. It was huge for me. And I was like, what is this God? Like, is this really what you have for me? Is this a fluke? Is the shoe going to drop? Like, right. am I waiting for the bottom to fall out? What is happening here? And, um, as, as things progressed, um, I absolutely love marketing, but 
we shifted quite a bit. You know, during your entrepreneurial journey, you have to be open to pivoting and shifting at any given moment, honestly. The market can change. Tech can change. Your people will change. Like post-COVID, everyone's different, right? If you knew somebody post-COVID, you do not know them anymore, right? (laughs) Yes. Or pre-COVID. Yes, you do not absolutely. know them anymore. Different they, person. Everyone is different, right? And so we we have these experiences in life. We have these experiences in our business that require this change of us. And um, I I was open to that. And I will tell you, that's the only reason I'm still in business because I have changed my business probably in a major way, probably four times since then. So we started as a marketing agency doing done for you services. And um, as part of that, my my first client that I had, she goes, well, I also want to learn this. Like, what if we do something where you do it for me now? And then we transition into me doing it later. And I said, I love that idea because this gal was a diamond in doTERRA. So she is a personal Ooh. brand. It's her that people were buying, right? They could buy doTERRA oils from anyone and they wanted to buy them from her, but why, right? So she needed to start showing up. She needed to get on camera. She needed to show up the same way online as she was in person. And so I created a curriculum and a kind of a process to help her learn how to do that. And that was what I really fell in love with. And I was like, okay, this is where it's at. My clients don't, they don't want things done for them. They're women. They're, they they want to do it, right? They want to learn it. They want to do it. They want to duplicate it. And so I really found that teaching them and empowering them to learn how to show up for themselves and for their personal brand was where it was at. And as we moved through things, I started seeing about eight clients a day and that got not so crazy. Oh, and yeah. it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't any more work than I was doing at my $11 an hour job. I was working. 10 to 12 hours a day at my 11 hour dollar, $11 an hour job. Um, now I, I really didn't mind doing so much for myself, you know, make, keeping the money for myself, but my body minded. So I have autoimmune and I was actually diagnosed autoimmune about six to eight months into my business because I really, really was not taking care of me. I was taking care of everybody else. And that is my nature. But But I started paying for it. Yeah. And so I would have to go to the hospital. I would get laid up for a day or two. My adrenals were totally and completely burnt out. I wasn't eating between calls. I wasn't even giving myself a potty break between calls. At this time, I also had a side gig. I was working for Stitch Fix as a stylist just to like make sure, you know, new in business. I wanted to make sure I had some something stable. Um. Thankfully, I always did, but I was doing a lot, right? I was doing the most I'd ever done, but I it felt good, right? But it also felt horrible physically. Right. That burnout is real. How transformed would your life be if you had 40 more prayers to pray? Go ahead and go to JeanettePeterson.com slash prayers and get my 40 prayers to transform your life and business today. And so I remember on Halloween one day, I was supposed to give a big talk, one of the biggest talks I'd ever given in front of a, in front of a crowd, in front of an audience. And they had paid for tickets to be there and I'm in the hospital. <gasps> oh, did it. Mm-hmm. And my liver is inflamed to three and a half times its size. And I am just done. So, right. I'm supposed to be giving this talk. And so I have a talk with myself instead. And I say, okay, self, (laughs) this isn't where you're supposed to be today. How did we end up here? Right. And I start thinking about, okay, what have I been doing to contribute to this? And what do I need to start doing to stop living this way? And that's where the idea of exponential income really started for me, where I could see that some of my peers and I could see the possibility of making more for less work, doing something once, but selling it five, 10, 20, a thousand times, right? Whatever it was, maybe it was a course, maybe it was a group program, maybe it was a membership. Mm -hmm. And I started this conversation with a girlfriend. I have, I have these amazing girlfriends, one in particular, who we will do what we call a double lunch date or a double date, I guess, where we will go out for either breakfast or lunch and stay for a second meal where it's like, lunch, breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner, because we need to talk that much. We have like an eight hour date 
And um, if you're someone who loves that, hop in my DMs, girl, we'll go, we'll go to lunch. Um, <laughs> most lunch dates for me are a minimum of three hours. So just be prepared if you ever have lunch with me. Um, but I've got this girlfriend who is a fellow business owner and we we would do these double dates. And I remember the exact moment we're talking through things and I'm like, Michelle, I'm sick. And Michelle also has Hashimoto's just like me. And we're, oh, you know, well, what, what can you do? Like what, what needs to be different? And I told her, well, I have this idea where all of my clients that I'm helping them with their social media strategies, they need something after the fact because they keep coming back to me and saying, oh, Sam, how do I use this feature? At the time, we were in the, the gold rush of Instagram, girl. Like every every freaking week, there was a new feature. There was stories. There was highlights. Mm -hmm. There was reels. Like everything was IGTV, new. IGTV. All those IGTV was a thing. Yeah. And it's not even a thing anymore. No, so, not even. <laughs> how that's do I the old thing, IGTV. <laughs> I really do too. Honestly, I haven't even thought about that. But um, you know, things were popping up every day. So this was 2018, and um, toward toward the end of 2018. So I said to her, "Well, I want to do something for my clients, so they have like a place to land, where they don't have to come back to me again for a full strategy, but they can stay up to date on all the changes, and they can come and I can review their um." their content plans and give them feedback on that where they can get support from other people. Um, and the other pain point that my clients were having was that they didn't have anyone to take their pictures on a regular basis. And at the time, Instagram was all pictures. We weren't doing video outside of IGTV, which was like Instagram live, you know? Yeah. So um, we needed pictures every day. We needed fresh content all the time. And paying for a professional photographer all the time just wasn't super realistic for everyone. And then their other option was their three-year-old with the best angles, you know, like this. Okay, mom. And then they got their husband on date night who's like this. Yeah. You know, yeah, and he's like, like, he, he doesn't care. He's just trying to get over with it, right? And you've got your, you've got your bra strap out. You've got your chapstick in your pocket. Like, he doesn't care. So I was like, wouldn't it be cool if we did these meetups where all the girlies got together and we took pictures of each other, but like we covered up the bra strap and we said, fix your hair. And we said, okay, now move like this. Right. And we just did it all on our phones. And it was not this like thing that we would have to pay exorbitant amount for. And I said, if I could put those two things together, that would be really cool. And she said, well, I would want to go to that. And I'm not your client. And I said, oh, okay good point because I thought this was going to be like a back-end membership it was not it was a front-end <laughs> membership and um so content and connection was born that that day I made the logo that night I went home and I made the logo I bought the website I uh secured the Instagram of course yes and um I started talking to my buddy who was a videographer and I was like hey what if we do this video shoot where we do like a mock meetup and I'm going to bring in all these girls and we're going to go to the farmer's market and we're going to like take pictures of each other. And you're just going to record us doing it. And that was like the first thought I had. I was like, Hey, let's, let's help them visualize this. Right. right. And so we go the weekend before Thanksgiving, we go and we do the video shoot. And then two weeks before Christmas, we do like a, a soft launch. And we did that in old town, San Diego. And I invited everyone I knew and about 40 girls showed up for brunch. And I was like, okay, cool. And we did brunch and I told them about what we were going to do. And then we just like went out and did it. Like, okay, yes. rip the bandit off and go do yeah. it. And more than half of those women converted immediately into members. And I was like, okay, I guess we have a membership with 20 plus women yep. already. And I was like, our founding right. members. They were our founding members. And that wasn't even the first, like, that wasn't even, that was a fifth of our founding members. And that wasn't even a real meetup yet. That was like a mock meetup still, a soft launch. And so our next launch, after our next launch, we got to 40 our, the following month with our next meetup. And I was like, okay, I guess we're doing this. And then once we went to 50, I decided, okay, I think I'm going to start closing up the Founders Club. And we went on a run from May yeah, May to June. And by the end of June, so within six months, we had 150 members in this membership. I love it. And at that point, people started saying, hey, Sam, can we open a chapter here? Can we open a chapter here? And by October of 2019, I had gone on this like tour of the country opening memberships in different locations. We had Minneapolis, we had Virginia, we or Richmond, Virginia, we had um 
gosh, now I'm blanking Pittsburgh. We had four or five locations in California. Um, we were working on Washington and we had Charleston, South Carolina, slated for April of 2020. <laughs> and that would have been number 10, right? Um, it was going to be, I've always wanted to go to Charleston. I've always loved it's the idea beautiful. of Charleston. I so love cool. South Carolina. It's so beautiful. Such good photo ops. And I was like, oh, it's going to be my birthday. It's going to be like this huge thing. And then your girl COVID came in. Yeah. <laughs> I was that like, girl. oh. Blah. So things changed there. Um, But I just, uh, that was not the Cliff Notes version. But what I'm trying to say is this business has evolved. I didn't, I, I'm not still doing the same thing I was doing when I started. So I went from a marketing agency to a marketing strategist, working one-on-one -on -one with people, to adding in a membership so that I could have some exponential income, stop relying so much on my own time and start moving that focus to my skills and really getting more out of what I could do for people. Um, still did one-on-one. -on -one. And then after 2020, I pivoted to teaching memberships because so many people were coming to me and saying, hey, Sam, I wanna build something like you built, but I wanna do an online version or I wanna do a hybrid like you did. And um, I was like, okay, I, like I could build a curriculum for this. I could help you. I probably built about 20 of them in 2020, 2021 before I officially changed my title to membership mentor. Um, and as we've progressed since then, I'm still a business strategist, still a, me a membership mentor, but my super duper big focus, big picture here is helping women a lot like you, Jeanette, who really, they want to stay home. And yeah. they want to be able to provide school for their kids or they want to be able to volunteer in their kids' class. They really want to be involved in their own family, right? They don't just want to clock in, clock out, take their kids to daycare, right? They want to live in this duality of being able to run this business and also live in their God-given feminine energy yes. where they're supposed to thrive as a wife and mother. And they can also make the money without all of the time, right? Now, is it still going to take time to be successful? Absolutely. Yes. But do you have to work eight hours a day to make full-time income? Not even close. I have a three, three day a week work week where I work at most three hours a day. So that is something that is totally attainable for people. And so my, my whole thing now is to help people build a business where they're no longer living in the leftovers, you know, what's left over right. from their business, they actually get to design their own life and design a business that supports that. So hey, girl. yeah, that's where I'm at now. So not cliff notes, but you know, there we go. But I love it because that's exactly <laughs> who I talk to. I want them to become unapologetic about what they want because yeah. a lot of people feel bad about saying, I don't want to do the laundry and the dishes. I want to outsource that. And then their mother-in-law voice comes in their head and saying, that's not good enough. You're not a good enough wife. Why didn't you make right. your husband food? But you're right. like, that's not what I want to do. And mm -hmm. living that and being okay with that, giving that permission. Right. So what is, what is your testimony? How did you come to Jesus? Cause I feel like God is all wrapped up in that story. He is, he is, he's wrapped up in every little piece, right? If we can look back, we can see it in, in all of our lives, even before we came to Jesus. Right. Right. So I first was introduced to Jesus when I was a little kid. Um, I I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I wasn't not raised in a Christian home. Like my parents would just kind of dabble a little bit. They'd go to church. Um, I knew who Jesus was, but I didn't know Jesus, right? Yeah, and so I, feel that. I, I would go to church when I was a kid. And then we started, I met this family who has been a huge part of my life, really like, instrumental in raising me up right and I started going to church with them every Sunday and this was a like a bigger church like in the 90s you know the rise of like the mega church happened where they had like soft rock music and like you know uh you could wear jeans to church and like stuff like that so we started going to a more modern church like that with them every Sunday and I was part of Awana so I do you remember Awana mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. My little red bag and my little Bible <laughs> and uh, my little workbook, right? And I loved Awana because it was like one of the first real like um, structures for me, right? My parents are, I call them fly by the seat of your pants kind of people. And uh, they they truly are. Um, I guess I didn't mention this. My husband and I have been nomadic for the last two years. Um, I retired him from his job. Uh, 
in 2021. We bought a motor home. Since then, we have also built a van and we have this like adventure fleet, right? We travel about 50% of the time. The point of me saying that is that my parents do the same thing and they are nomadic. They have seven kids all over the country and that's just what they do. They're retired. They go visit their kids and their grandkids, obviously, <laughs> really their grandkids. But <clears throat> my parents have yeah. always been this way. They're, they're kind of nomadic people. And um, I craved a lot of structure. And Awana was the first thing I remember being like, okay, I love this structure. I love that I can like, you know, accomplish something and get rewarded for it and move up the ranks, right? Um, so I remember being in Awana. After that, with the same family every year, we would go to Christian horse camp. And I, that was a huge blessing for me in my life. Um, we would go to church every Sunday, right? And so I love the concept of Jesus because there was so much hope. And there was yeah. so much redemption and there was just a lot of chaos in my life. Like I said, my parents have seven kids on accident. So <laughs> they're, they're, they're fun people, right? They have a lot of fun, but they just didn't have a lot of structure. And um, I just love this idea that my life could be different than what theirs was. It didn't have to be, you know, this, this hard life. Right. And um, as I got older, I decided that I was an agnostic because I was the punk rock thing to do. Um, and <laughs> I, I met my husband. Know. My husband was a uh my husband was an atheist when I met him, or at least self-proclaimed. And it was because his parents were Pentecostal or his grandparents were Pentecostal pastors. And he was just freaked out by that. And he was like, No, this yeah. all is this is some weird juju. And so <laughs> kind of wrote it off, right? And then um we start getting older and uh my husband decides that we should start going to church because that is the adult thing to do. And so we start going to our community church, we get married, and um, my husband goes to boot camp. He was in the Navy for 86 days. That's a long story, but um, he was in the Navy, and it was it was really hard for him. My husband and I are high school sweethearts. We met in, in ninth grade. We started dating in 10th grade, and we have been together ever since. Got Aww. married when we were 19, and when we were 21, he went to boot camp. And that was like really the first time we'd ever been apart. And it was super hard for him. And he started going to church while he was at, um, at boot camp by himself and he got saved. And, um, that, that was, that was really awesome for him. And, uh, I had been saved, but I had not been baptized. And so after he got to, got out of boot camp, we moved to San Diego and, um, we both got baptized together in 2014, which was awesome. And then from there, we have just had a really awesome walk with the Lord. And it has been, I would say, absolutely instrumental in our marriage. You know, we have been together almost 20 years now and we have been married for 13 years this year. Yeah, 13 years this year. The math should be easy because we got married 10, 10, 10. So wow. yeah. <laughs> we've been married 13 years. And, um, it has been like it, we were having this conversation with his grandma the other day and she's like, yeah, you know, you guys have stayed together and all these people are getting divorced around you. And I said, you know, it's because we have a what is it called? A a, a strand of three cords or something like that, mm -hmm. um, where like you have to put God in your marriage. You have to put God in your life or else you are going to find a lot of hardships and not that you won't find hardships with Jesus in your life, but you will be able to have a solution to them. It's a lot easier when you put God in the mix than when he's not in the mix. Because I have tried. I've tried to do it by myself. It's just easier when Jesus is at the wheel, not me. <laughs> I know. As as people who are entrepreneurs, we probably all have this um, control concept, right? Where we want to be. Girl, not, not me. I don't. I am not. Right, a control. <laughs> Never. Right. So there are things that I like to like think that I should keep from the Lord, right? Where it's oh, like, yes. oh, well, these are mine to handle. You you can handle this stuff, but these are mine to handle. And so that's something that I've been working on probably for the last like five years, really diligently. And it's a it's like a daily thing, right? It's like, oh, well, I'm going to leave that out here. Like, yeah, we're not going to talk about my... that. Yeah, I'll deal know. with that. Um, that's my problem, you know, kind of thing. Um, and And God wants all of it. He wants to help you with all of it. So it, it can be a struggle as an entrepreneur, but like, honestly, there's no way, no way that I could do this without being able to lean on the Lord. Like I would have quit. I would never start it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I've been like, no, I'll just stay here at my $11 an hour job and figure it out. We'll make it work. Well, cause my decision wasn't safe. It wasn't logical. No, it was reckless. 
Yeah, it was super reckless. And I was like, okay, Lord, I trust you. Yeah. And that was the first time in my life where I did that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it worked out. It, like I love it when he comes more. through like that because you're like, I have no idea what I'm what I'm doing. I don't understand this. This yeah. does not make sense. Right. But God, you called me this, but like I said, by any like human intelligent person would be like, that's a reckless decision. You should not do yes. that. You should not mm-hmm. do that. <laughs> And I didn't even really tell anybody when I left my job. Just like I hadn't <laughs> told very many people before we went nomadic and left San Diego. Like that was such a shocker to people. And now we're about to do something else. And it's just like, <laughs> I do this stuff. But it's like, I swear, you guys, it's not me. It's God telling me to do this stuff. And being <laughs> obedient, which is also scary. Yeah, it is. It is. But it's it's fun. Like there's huge reward in it, right? Mm-hmm. So what's one thing you've learned on this journey to help you become unstoppable just being like I'm not going to stop doing this well I think it's just what I was just talking about is like that my relationship with the Lord is fueling all of it like I would have quit and it's funny like up until I had some I had some rough times recently mentally um you know being here in Washington with the rain (laughs) so hard after living in California for 10 years like it is the the seasonal depression thing is so real and I like didn't ever give it any thought and I was like oh man but um I you know I had some I had some bouts and for the first time in my career I really thought about quitting and I was like "Mm, is this for me and I was like girl what would you do instead like come on you're just gonna (laughs) sit there like you're just gonna sit there with all this knowledge and not share it like how rude that is your god-given talent you have to share it (laughs) Like, how stupid could you be to do that? And I was like, okay. So, like, I was gaslighting myself. But (laughs) if I didn't have the Lord to, like, assure me, like, hey, this is just a season. This is not forever. Then I for sure would have quit. But like I said, I would have never even started. So, I would say my secret weapon, my secret, anything like that is daily communication relationship with Jesus. Amen. I love that. I love that. So, I asked you to take a quiz. What is oh, your spiritual gosh. gift? Do you gosh, remember what your? So I looked it up. Oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I looked for your answer. Um, yours was exhortation. Were you surprised? Um, yeah, because like that sounds like like really bad. That sounds like something a mobster <laughs> would do or something. <laughs> what does that so, mean? It it means that you are an encourager. You are just the person oh, that's wow. always going to be like. Yes, you got it. Keep going. This is how you do it. It's literally who you are as a person, I think. Anyways. So, so even though it sounds like extortion, yes. it is the opposite of that. The opposite. <laughs> <laughs> it's exhort, not extort. <laughs> yes. Exhort. And be like, yes, I love you. You're doing great. I would say, yeah, I would say that's totally me. Yeah. I agree hundred percent. Like I was looking at the result and I was like, oh duh. Yes. Of course that's what she was. <laughs> I've talked to a lot of people about their gifts and they're kind of confused about like some of them will get like prophecy. And I'm like, prophecy does not mean that you're just like a prophet. A prophet. It just means that you're like <laughs> connecting with Jesus every day and you can hear his voice and you can discern when people are of Jesus and when they're not. It does not necessarily mean you're like prophesying over everybody. Right. <laughs> but exhortation, that's 100% you. That's also mine because I love just like reminding people who they are reminding people like yeah. you got this you got this this will be fine mm-hmm. and turning back to jesus and using their gifts i feel like sometimes we don't use our gifts because we're scared mm-hmm. i did it for 15 years i don't do any extorting in it it's boring i don't like it it's, i hate it <laughs> but when i get to coach my heart sets on fire. And I know that's, that's right. how, you know, you feel that joy and all the fruits of the spirit when you feel you're on the right path. So I right. love that. Me too. So what made you unapologetic about your faith? What were you like, all right, I'm going all in on Jesus. That has been a journey. And I would say that I'm still not totally there publicly because I am so afraid to offend people. And this year specifically, I actually just wrote a caption that I'm going to be publishing here soon is that I am no longer going to downplay my faith. And 
I have put um a lot of podcasts up recently on my podcast. My podcast is not specifically Christian based, but it's not not either. And so I have had a lot of guests on you included where we talk about the Lord and we talk about biblical truth and biblical principles. And I think a lot of people believe that that should be left out of business. And I'm really coming to this conclusion where it's like, no, like we don't have a business without that. Right. And I have just been like wrestling with this for so long because I remember the first time I tried to do it, there was a girl who commented that I didn't even know. And this was the only troll comment I've ever got. Honestly, like people say like, oh, there's bullies on Instagram, blah, blah. I have I seen it all on Instagram. I do. I've never had a bully. Me never. Either. Except for this one time. So I had, it was like a New Year's post that I was like attributing it to my relationship with the Lord and um, you know, how great my last year was and how great my next year is going to be, uh, because I put all my faith in God and, um, this girl comments and she's, you know, some, one of these like woo woo girlies. And, uh, she was like, Oh honey, I feel so sad for you that you put all your faith in this man in the sky when the power is actually in you and all this stuff. And I was like, Oh gosh, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, your truth and your power and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, girlfriend, I am a little tiny speck on this yeah. earth. I am nothing without Jesus. Like, come on. Yeah. So I, it did scare me a little bit because I had never had that happen before. I still have not had that happen since then. Um, But, you know, it's been it's been a journey that I've had to go on because I do have a lot of friends and clients that are not believers and I don't want to offend them. But the thing is, is they know that I am. Yeah. And they, they still love me. So yeah. I don't think that they're going to unfriend me, unfollow me. You still me. love them, even if they're not believers. Exactly. So that was going to be my next point is that I have not treated them that way, even though they're right. not believers. So the fact that I expect them to treat me that way is weird. I should expect them to treat me the same way I treat them. And if they don't, then we're actually not friends. So. Yeah. And that has nothing to do with your faith or what you believe. Just Exactly. So I love that because I feel like I spend a lot of time with woo-woo people and I was like, okay, I don't, I, I am, you do you over there. I'm going to do my Jesus, okay? Jesus made the universe. <laughs> it is not the universe that I believe in. Right. The creator. I believe in the creator. Right. And so like, I get it, but I always treated them like my first thing was, I'm going to treat you with the love of Jesus and he's going to love you no matter what. And right. a lot of those women would say to me, thank you, because I have never spent time with a Christian woman where I didn't feel like I was being judged. I was like, oh. crazy. I was like, that is not my job. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to love you. I'm trying to do Jesus's work and that ideology of you can only be like this, work like this, do these things. You have to wear like dresses down to your ankles. <laughs> otherwise you're not a Christian woman is not my version of Christianity. It's right. love your neighbor. Like you live yourself first, mm -hmm. the commandments, fruit of the spirit. And that's it. You know what I mean? I had a conversation yesterday with uh, my nail girl who, uh, I don't know how it came up, but, oh, we were talking about my podcast and she was like, oh, what's your podcast about? And I was telling her and I said yeah recently I've had a lot more Christian topics on there um and she's like oh you're a Christian and I was like yeah are you and she goes deconstructing and I go oh okay yeah. I and I see so many people who are deconstructing you know on TikTok and all <laughs> and um I'm like you know I totally can sympathize with you I didn't grow up that way I mean right. I grew up on the if I'm being completely honest I've had an easier time coming to the Lord because I grew up on the West coast. I wasn't in the Bible belt. I wasn't taught about purity culture. I wasn't shamed for things. Like there's all these things that come with the church, right? Not Jesus. These don't come yes. from Jesus. These yes. come from men that want power and women that want power in the church. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said to her, you know, hurt people, hurt people mm -hmm. and people want power and none of that is from Jesus. And I said, I actually don't believe in religion. I believe in a relationship with Jesus. 
And I all everything else is tradition. Everything else is, um, you know, religion. It is it's a practice and a ritual, which Jesus didn't condone. You know, you're my people, like, girl. You are my people. He was, <laughs> he was like, you don't just do this to do it. You know, no. it's like you're not supposed to tell people when you're fasting. You're not supposed to tell people. It, it's it's not about the claps that you're going to get. The attention you're going to get is always about your personal, intimate relationship with the Lord. And a lot of what happens in the church, especially the church of the 90s and later er, and earlier, mm -hmm. was about what it looks like, not what it feels like. Right. No, and push your kids out in church and then walk in with smiles and right? saying, hi, what are you doing? And then you go back and you beat your kids again. Like, right. And there's, you know, there was all this sexual abuse and oh, there's still, yeah. like, and, but anywhere that there is Jesus, there's going to be the devil trying to take him down. Right. And so it's, I can, I can understand that there are people that have been hurt by the church, but you didn't get hurt by Jesus. No. And no. so, you know, I was telling her all these things and she was like, yeah, good point. Like, it's not Jesus that hurt me. It is the shame and the pride and the boasting and all of these things. And I was like, yeah, you can, you can ditch the church. Like you don't have to be yeah. <laughs> a part of the church. Now the Lord wants us to have fellowship and community, but you can do that in a women's Bible study and you can do that in a different church, like wherever you're called to be, you don't have to go to the same church for the rest of your life and do the same rituals just to do them. No. Here in my hometown, it has been so frustrating because we've been trying to trying to find a church. And after you have encountered the Holy Spirit and you have him like living in your heart and you speak to him every day, it is so hard to enter a church where everyone there is just going through the motions mm -hmm. and they have never, at least they have never admitted that they have had an encounter with Jesus. They well, don't have so a testimony. Sad. Yeah, they don't have this testimony. They're just going to church because their parents told them to go to church. And they kept going to church because they know they need to bring their kids to church. And it's like, you you can feel it when you walk into the room. And I'm like, oh, y'all need a revival. Yeah, this is not the place. <laughs> I got to get out of here. <laughs> They're not speaking truth here. They're yeah. just doing feel good stuff. They're not, you know, they're not worshiping on the top of their lungs. Nobody's putting their hands up. There's no... There's no yeah. Jesus in this room. <laughs> I think they so, just want it on easy mode. They want church on easy mode. And if I just show up and read my Bible today and then do it again next Sunday, that'll be fine. I'm doing the things. I'm going to get into heaven. It'll be great. But like, it yeah. is not even about, that's not the goal. The goal is not to get into heaven. The goal is to bring heaven to earth and have a relationship, like you said, here on earth. Like, yeah, like our job here is to deconstruct the the things that happened, all the church hurt that's happened, all the all the women with the big hair and the shoulder pads that made other women feel like crap about themselves and judge them. Mm -hmm. Like our job here is not to judge anyone. Like you said, yeah. it is to be like Jesus, not to enforce the rules of the Bible, but to live them out. Yes. I'm literally wearing my shirt today says, can you read it? Leave the judging to Jesus. <laughs> I love that. Because <laughs> it's not for me. It's not for me to judge. That's on you. Like, I'm going to do me and I'm going to love you accordingly. I love so it. So what is your favorite Bible verse and why? Goodness. I don't think hmm, I had chosen one at the beginning of the year, um, but I'm actually going to talk to you about a parable instead okay. of a verse. Because I, I, I think my Bible verses change like with the season that I'm in, but yeah. this parable um, cause it relates to business. I remember sitting, I don't, I don't recall the name of the parable, but I, I recite it to people all the time. So, uh, I was sitting in church and the talk that my pastor was giving was about the, um, the parable of the three men who one squanders his talents. So there's this, um, like, a what is this? He's like a farm worker. I can't remember a farm owner. He has three people that work for him. One man decides to sow the seeds that he's given from his boss and grow something big. One guy kind of in the middle, you know, he saves some, he grows some. And um, the last man buries his in the dirt and, and says, I was saving it for you. Right. And so the master comes back and he says, okay, what did you guys do with those seeds that I gave you? And one guy says, I have all of this to harvest now. And he goes, well done. 
And then this guy says, well, I have a little of this and a little of that. And the last guy had buried his in a way that they wouldn't grow. And he said to him, I gave you this so that you could multiply it. I gave you this so that this could be fruitful and you wasted it. And the pastor was talking about that we do this a lot with our gifts from the Lord and we we squander them. We save them for later, right? Especially if you're if you're in a job right now. And at the time I was in my job and all these things the Lord was speaking to me saying like, hey, you're not going to be in a job forever. Like, I hope you're ready, right? Um, if you're in a job right now or you're kind of like in the middle, you're you're not doing what you know you should be or could be doing in your business or you're kind of in the middle, like you've got a job and you've got a business, but neither of them are thriving the way they should be. I want you to consider this parable because the Lord gives us these things to be bold with them, yes. not to squander them, not to waste yes. them away. Yes. And I will, I will be the first one to admit that I am a squanderer at my core. Like that's my, my innate thing. And, and it's probably some kind of trauma response from childhood. You know, I'm one of seven kids. You gotta, you gotta take what yeah. you can get and keep it, you know, <laughs> and uh, there's not going to be none left for you. Right. So um, I I have this like a thing where I will buy a shirt or a purse, right? I have this coach purse that I love and I never use it because I'm afraid that it's going to get ruined. And like, I, cause I ruin things. <laughs> I mean, we're humans. Yeah. So we do. I'll buy, this, I'll buy a shirt that I really like and I'll never wear it. So then I started buying two of the same thing, which is kind of funny. So I'll buy two of the same shoes I really like, or two of the same shirts or pants that I really like. Because I know that I'll ruin one of them, right? And so I, at my core, have always been guilty of this. And I was like, okay, God, I hear you. I need to step out. I need to stop playing small. I can't work for someone else forever because that's not where you've called me to be. Yeah. I'm happy that I was able to help these businesses grow and thrive and complete some of these amazing missions that we've done. But I know that's not where I'm supposed to be forever. And so I heard that message that day and it has like stuck to me, stuck with me. And I want to say that was like in 2016. I, that's the parable of talents. And I yes. love that parable. It's like one of my favorites because I'm like, God is giving you these gifts. You have to use them. Yes. He didn't give them to you to like, just hang out with. We are one of bajillion that will be formed. Right. So let's use our gifts while we can. Yeah. Yeah. We got a mission. We all have a mission. Let's go do that thing. Whatever he's giving us, do it. And like yep. you said, boldly, because we are supposed to live boldly and voraciously for Christ. And I just love it. Exactly. Especially women who have businesses, because I feel like we're kind of a pariah in the church anyways. Like mm -hmm. the women that I hang out with at the homeschool co-op, that's all they do. They just homeschool their kids. Mm. Girl, I love that for you. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't think that my gifts were meant to just be in this 15 person co-op. Mm -hmm. God made me for big, bold things. So I'm going to go try and do big, bold things. And he's going to show me which way I'm supposed to go. Right. Love it. And you want big, bold things for your daughters, right? Yes. And God wants big, bold things for you. So. My... Sorry, my friend, she is very the purity kind of lady and she was mm. she's got three girls and three boys and she was like well when you got boys you gotta put them ahead of the girls you know how that is and I was like what did you just say to me what? <laughs> wait what, what? <laughs> and I literally laughed at her because I was like she's got to be joking right <laughs> like <laughs> she has got to be joking she was not joking they are more important to her in her family dynamic than the girls. I don't know Ooh. where in the Bible that says that. Helpers, yes. Below the men, no. I don't, I did not see that. Wow. And, um, That's really interesting. There's a problem I... 31 and I didn't see none of that. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting, you know, especially these days people just take things too far, right? Like yeah, like it, it's like you know, you either have basically the man haters or you've got that. And it's like, well, the Bible says that women are created differently but equally. Like men and women have completely different functions as human beings. And so we are created for those functions. But men are not to be put before women. <laughs> 
no, not like not like she was saying. I was like, that's like, like, if we're real no. honest, men are nothing without women. Like, <laughs> amen. <laughs> like literally, you can't have a baby on your own. No, they can't. Well, women they are can't function. We are the yeah. organizers. We are builders. We're makers. Yes, we are so like, co-creators. With God. They provide the the resources, right? Whether that's food, money muscle whatever it is right they provide the resources and we're the ones that make it into something yes and both are equally needed yeah. for sustaining life you can't do one <laughs> without the other right i in my family don't cook i don't cook i just don't i don't I, clean i also don't do that i am not a good housewife. <laughs> <laughs> well so you know my husband stays home right he's uh he's getting ready to go back to work and you know i've had these talks with god where like i'll tell you girlfriend i have not cleaned a toilet in 10 years probably <laughs> um because that's just not my thing i also do not clean the dishes like i do not yeah. i will cook all day long i love to cook but i will not i'm not a cleaner i'm allergic i'm super allergic to dust and so i can't do that um i will tell you guys if you have extra income because you have created an exponential offer suite in your business you can't afford to hire a cleaner and that is okay. You it do is not okay. Please do that. I will just say cleaning is not my gift. Like I am not ever going to do that well, like, cause I just hate it. Yeah. But, um, I, I was wrestling with God a couple months ago about this, this idea of really leaning into my feminine energy, because as someone who has been in business for all these years, retired my husband, and I'm now the provider financially, it created a lot of this masculine energy, right? Yeah. And I decided yeah. that I really don't like it. And I was like, this is actually not where I want to be. I also have PCOS and mm -hmm. like, I have to take hormones to have estrogen, right? And so I have this abundance of testosterone anyway. And I was like, this is not where I want to be. And I don't think this is where God wants me. Like I right. need to lean into my feminine energy. And I'm talking to Jesus about it, right? And he's like, so go clean the toilet. And I was like, no, oh. <laughs> I'm cleaning the damn toilet. And so I didn't, I didn't clean the toilet. And I'm continuing to have hardships in my life and, you know, talk to Jesus. And he's like, we'll go clean the toilet. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense. No, I don't want to do that. Then I did. I got, not that the toilet was disgusting or anything. It was just like this thing, like prove it, you know, yeah. go clean yeah. the toilet. And I'm not saying that the cleaning the toilet is women's work. Cause like I said, I have not been cleaning that toilet for years. Um, and I was obedient and I cleaned the toilet and everything turned around. <laughs> But I'm not saying you have to clean the toilet in order for your life to work out. That was just a, that was a test. <laughs> I love that though. That's like, that's, that's good. I cooked dinner the other day and I felt like that was a test and I did it. I saw that. I saw your little chicken yes. tenders. You cooked dinner. That's I awesome. Did. I did. But and you know, if that's pretty good, if that's not your gift, like it, God is not asking you to do things that are not within your giftings. Like maybe sometimes, but right. not. Not in a way where you're just going to like absolutely hate your life all the time. Like God is not a dictator. So no. he's, if, it, I mean, you maybe chose a husband that likes to cook or cooks well, and that balances you out and that's totally fine. Yeah, it does. And I love it because he likes to take care of our family in that way. Like yeah. cooking meals and it makes, it makes him feel good and it makes me feel good. And there doesn't need to be gender roles in that way, no. you know? Like for me, I completely stepped out of every gender role I was ever supposed to have or society deemed that I was supposed to have. And I was like, okay, let's not make this about gender roles. But like, I do want to be cooking for my husband more because I actually enjoy it. I right. do want to clean the toilet here and there because it makes him happy because he doesn't have to do it. Right. I'm not going to do it every day. I'm not even going to do it every month. But yeah, that's how I feel about here cooking. And I can yeah, add it in. Sometimes, you, cook, you know, night, you know? Yeah. yeah, maybe in a couple more weeks, I'll cook again, right? We'll see. <laughs> Sam, it was so good having you on the podcast, and I love you. Is there anything that people can get a hold of you? How can they get a hold of you? What can they go further with you on? Do you have a freebie you're giving away? Tell me all the things. 
I do. So I mostly hang out on Instagram. You can find me at samanthaharris.co. And there you will find actually two freebies. So both things that are going to steer you in the direction or help guide you in the direction of stepping into exponential income, allowing yourself to really start living a life that you want, no no longer living in the leftovers, what's left over from the business that you built that was supposed to give you freedom, but now is reactionary. So um, one of the freebies is called the membership prep worksheet. That is for people who know they want to do a membership. They want to get everything out on paper, really start organizing their ideas and kind of guiding them towards some best practices. Um, so that is one option for you. The other option is called the offer suite edit. And it does similarly kind of guides you through all that stuff, but it's more for a holistic view of your entire offer suite. It really walks you through an audit of like, hey, what does this look like versus what do I want it to look like? And what steps do I need to take to start making this happen? So those two things, and you can grab both of them if you want, they're totally free, um, will get you in my circle. They will um, sign you up for my email list where you can hear from me every single week, once or twice a week. And um, I would love to hear from you too. I'd love to connect in the DMs. I'm a big people person. Like I'm not here just to sell you something. I want to be friends. So Hop into my DMs. I'd love to talk to you. Love to hear what you thought of this episode. And I look forward to hearing from you. Awesome. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Jeanette. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Wow. That was so good. So I know that you know somebody that also needs to hear that. So share this episode. Leave a review. And I would love if you could watch my free workshop at JeanettePeterson.com slash missing piece. I'll see you guys over on the grams at Jeanette.Peterson. Bye.